changing a single-seat fighter jet into a two-seat fighter jet. Although it seems to be just adding a pilot to a single-seat fighter jet, it is actually a complicated project that has an impact on the aerodynamic shape and combat radius of the fighter plane. So how do you change a single seat to a double seat? What are the specific effects? If single seat fighters want to change into a two seater, the first thing to consider is whether to change into a side by side two seater or a tandem two seater. The positions are different and the places that need to be changed are also different. Considering that most modern fighters are tandem two seaters, we'll talk about tandem two seaters first. As for side-by-side -side two-seaters, not many modern fighters use them, so we'll talk about that later. Converting a single-seat fighter into a two-seater is really just adding a seat behind the single seat and then installing the displays, controls, ejection seat, and pilot life support systems. Finally, the fighters will be adjusted according to the changes in structure. All of this is easy to say but very difficult to do. For a fighter, the rear of the pilot's seat is prime fuel tank space, and a second set of seats would crowd the space of the tanks and even the avionics. To accommodate the new rear seat, the fuselage structure at the front of the airplane is usually lengthened to increase the fuselage space. Also, the cockpit cover has to be modified in shape, usually low in the front and high in the back, to ensure that the rear seat pilot has a 3 degrees flat forward view. The spine of the fuselage may also have to be enlarged if one wants to make up for the avionics squeezed out by the rear seat as well as the in-flight fuel space. This would definitely change the shape of the fighter. In order to maintain the stability of the aircraft, it is necessary to redesign the aerodynamic shape of the aircraft, such as by changing the shape of the vertical tail, increasing the swept back angle of the leading edge, and changing the trailing edge from vertical to swept back. Secondly, there is the weight of the aircraft. Ordinary airliners have to weigh their baggage during takeoff to adjust the center of gravity and counterweight of the fuselage. The same problem exists with warplanes. Because the structure has been changed, the center of gravity and counterweight of the warplane have to be recalculated. This is not difficult. The problem is that the added weight when changing from a single seat to a double seat may affect the life of the fighter's weapons bays as well as the structure of the fuselage. The ideal fuselage shape would be a structurally complete cylinder, but an enlarged cockpit cover equals an enlarged opening above the fuselage. Moreover, the rear seat occupies the main fuel tank and equipment compartment, which will affect the fuel distribution in the tank. Considering the rotational inertia of the fuselage during flight, the structural life of the fuselage will also be affected, so it is necessary to strengthen part of the fuselage structure, which will lead to an increase in the weight of the fuselage. Theoretically, the conversion of a single-seat aircraft to a two-seat aircraft would result in a weight gain of approximately 400 kilograms. The weight of the ejection seat is about 100 to 120 kilograms, the total weight of the pilot's weight, parachute, and field survival equipment is basically 250 kilograms, and 150 kilograms of reinforcing materials. Russia's previous single-seat Su-33 converted to a two-seat Su-33 UB, which also added roughly 400 plus kilograms. Therefore, the single-seat to two-seat conversion has a significant impact on fighter aircraft. The most obvious of these is the impact on maximum range and maximum speed. After the Soviet Su-27 was converted to the two-seat version of the Su-27 UBK, due to the smaller volume of the fuel tanks, the rise in wind resistance, and the staggered design of the cockpit, the resistance to flight in the high subsonic phase would increase by about 15%. So its maximum flight speed was reduced from Mach 2.35 to Mach 2.0 and ranged from 3,900 to 3,000 km. The Soviet Su-34 used parallel two-seaters, which resulted in an increased cross-sectional area at the front of the fuselage, and the actual combat radius with bombs was less than 750 km. The overload capacity of the airframe is also affected due to the change in the volume of fuel in the main tank. Normally, the fuel tanks in the fuselage will continue to lose weight during flight, thus reducing the load stresses on the wing routes. 
The addition of a seat, on the other hand, increases the load on the wing's wing route during long flights and reduces the overload capacity of the airframe. In particular, the Soviet fighter utilizes the lower surface of the fuselage as an aerodynamic bearing surface, which not only reduces the fighter's overload but also affects the life of the fuselage. And because the rear seat pilots have a higher seat, their heads are further away from the axis of the airplane. When the aircraft rolls over, the blood is thrown to the head by centrifugal force, and as long as the warplane rolls over at a slightly greater speed, the rear seat pilot will be dizzy, so the maneuverability of the warplane will also be limited. In addition, the conversion of a single-seat fighter to a two-seat fighter will also affect the pilot's ejection escape. When a two-seat fighter ejects, the back seat ejects first. If the front seat ejects first, the rear seat pilot will be burned by the rocket flame of the ejection seat. Therefore, if a single-seater is converted to a two-seater with limited space, not only will the performance of the aircraft be affected, but even the original equipment required for air combat will be simplified. For example, in the early MiG-29 UB, even the fire control radar was forced to cancel. In the previous Su-57 to two-seat program, some fighters even took up a large part of the space in the front radar compartment. The side-by-side, two-seat design is represented by the Russian Su-34. Not many modern fighters use side-by-side two-seaters, and those that do are basically bombers. Air superiority fighters have very high requirements for flight performance, and the side-by-side -side two-seater will cause the cockpit frontal projection area to be too large and will increase the width of the fuselage, increasing the fighter aircraft's drag in the air. Therefore, two-seat fighters are generally tandem cockpits. Only the Russian Su-24M, Su-34, and the USFB-111, which has now been withdrawn from service, use the side-by-side -side two-seat design because the maneuverability requirements are not so high. However, the side-by-side -side cockpit is not without its advantages, as the seats are on the left and right for easy communication between pilots. Although it may sound strange, this is the case. The Su-34 is a tactical bomber that needs to undertake ultra-low altitude penetrating attacks into the enemy's battlefield, which requires a high degree of pilot coordination, so the Russians chose to use a side-by-side -side cockpit. In short, from single seat to two seat, the performance of the warplane will be greatly affected, and you will need to adjust the aerodynamic characteristics. Now only the third generation of fighters can be modified in this way, after all, the engine has the space to be upgraded, can be lighter, and uses less fuel to maintain the original performance. The space saved can then be given to the rear seats. But not for fourth or fifth generation fighters. Avionics and engines have reached a certain level of performance, there is no way to continue upgrading. And speaking of fifth generation fighters, this was a hot topic before. That is, does the fifth generation fighter need a two seat version? For this issue, the mainstream view is that it is not needed. Whether it is the US F-22, F-35, or Russia's Su-57, it is a single-seat version. However, mainstream does not mean absolute, Russia had planned to provide India with a two-seat version of the Su-57, and the United States of America's F-22 also wanted to develop a two-seat version at first. My opinion is that a fifth-generation fighter does not need a two-seater. The F-22 wanted to develop a two-seat version because the avionics at the time were not highly automated. But when the F-35 was developed, the US equipped it with a highly automated flight control system and a highly integrated battlefield information system, so that even the helmet can display the battlefield situation, so there is no need to add another seat. According to the words of the United States, the development of a two-seat version of the warplane means that this warplane is not intelligent enough, the degree of automation is not high, so it needs to be like the second generation regeneration of aircraft with two pilots, one responsible for the flight and the other for the combat. And as far as the current situation is concerned, there are generally four situations in which modern warplanes with two seats are used, trainer aircraft, ground attack aircraft, electronic warfare aircraft, and drone-controlled warplanes, none of which are the job of a fifth-generation warplane. 
However, some people believe that it is possible to convert a fifth-generation warplane into a two-seat version of an electronic warfare aircraft, relying on stealth capabilities to fly to a key enemy location, turn on electronic jamming, and then use the stealth performance to withdraw when the mission is completed. This mode of operation is more flexible than ordinary electronic warfare aircraft. In this regard, I think it is unnecessary. It is true that fifth-generation fighters have electronic warfare capabilities, for example, the F-35 is equipped with the an ASQ-239 electronic warfare system, which can locate radiation sources and conduct infrared counter-operations. But this is a passive sensor, the only way to jam is to use the radar in the nose without a dedicated pod or antenna. It is not the same as the EA-18G Growler's electronic suppression method. A fighter like the Growler, which is specialized in electronic warfare, can suppress a wide range of enemy electronics, but the F-35 can't do that. Of course, if you add a few electronic warfare pods to the F-35, you can indeed achieve the effect of the Growler, but the release of electromagnetic signals will affect the stealth performance of the F-35, and it is difficult to safely evacuate the enemy area. People also think that the two-seat version of the five-generation fighter aircraft is larger, the weapons bay is also larger, if you can get on board the ship, you can act as a stealth version of the F-14 and then carry air-to-air -air missiles to attack the enemy's early warning aircraft or carry supersonic cruise missiles for long-distance combat at sea. This idea is also not very realistic, converting a single-seat aircraft into a two-seat aircraft will lead to an increase in the weight of the aircraft, and the fighter's flight resistance becomes larger. Seriously affect the performance of the warplane. So now that the five generations of fighters are generally single seat, and the F-35C is already more than 30 tons, if you increase the weight, the maneuverability cannot be guaranteed. Then talk about the problem of funds. Although the F-35's price has been declining, there are still 70 million US dollars if the development of a two-seat version, the performance deterioration at the same time that the price is also more expensive, completely outweighs the loss. For the time being, the only possibility of changing the five-generation fighter jet into a two-seat version is to use it as a control aircraft for drones, viewing the fighter jet as a new air combat platform. Now that the world's countries are discussing the future development of fighter aircraft, the view is basically the same. That is, manned fighter aircraft and unmanned aircraft engage in synergistic combat. For example, Lockheed Martin previously proposed the concept of distributed team air combat. F-35 and NGAD as the center, with different drones to cooperate in combat. It's just that autonomous drone flight and autonomous attack are much more difficult than Tesla's autopilot. At present, there is nothing wrong with autonomous flight of drones, but basically, the operator presets the target and then the drone flies according to the actual situation, rather than the drone deciding the flight route and attacking the target autonomously according to the battlefield situation. Because of the limitations of AI technology, the drone cannot be comparable to human battlefield self-control and decision-making abilities in complex situations. The backseat pilot of a two-seat fifth-generation fighter can act as a weapons officer to manually control the drone. But I don't think it's necessary to add an extra seat to the fighter to achieve this type of combat. Because manned fighters operating in tandem with drones don't have to be commanded by manned fighters, ground troops can command drones just as well. And although the current drones are not smart enough, that does not mean that the future will not be smart enough. For example, in the Skyborg program, the Skyborg system has been tested on a variety of drones, such as the UTAP-22 and MQ-20. Drones equipped with the Skyborg system can already act as network nodes, allowing the F-22 and F-35 to communicate with each other. And with the explosion of AI technology this year, it may be possible to use it on drones in a few years, at which point manned fighters won't be needed to maneuver them. So what do you think about the two-seat version of the fifth-generation fighter? Welcome to discuss together in the comments section, we will see you in the next issue.